Welcome to the course module of Communication System Engineering. In this particular video, we are uh, going to uh, discuss about the white noise process. So let's begin this discussion. So first of all, uh, we have to look at what is this white process. So normally, the white process, if you see, the definition of this white process says, uh, it is uh, the process in which all frequency components appear with equal power. That is the power spectral density, uh, which is normally denoted by S, uh, SXF, is a constant for all frequencies. So what does it mean by the white process? Okay. So normally this uh, process, uh, we can have any random process, which can be denoted by X uh, capital XT. So if you calculate the power spectral density that reflects the power content uh, distribution among the different frequency components. So when this uh, frequency, uh, this power spectral density function uh, is a constant for all frequencies. So here we can see this particular graph of power spectral density function. So what this power spectral density means, it will be uh, the distribution of power among different uh, frequency component will be denoted by the power spectral density. So its unit will be in the watts per hertz, okay? <clears throat> so you can also say that the power spectral density is nothing but it is the power content uh, available in the uh, um, unit bandwidth, okay? And it will be denoted, bandwidth will be denoted in one hertz, right? So it is the power available in uh, one hertz bandwidth. So that is your power spectral density function. So uh, normally uh, when any random process, when it is a white process, then what we can see that uh, in the power spectral density curve, okay, uh, all the frequency component will have the same power. Okay, here you can see that it is all the frequency components are actually having the same power. Right, and this frequency will be varying right from zero to infinity. So up to infinity, all this frequency component will have a constant power. So that time it will be called as the white process. So why it is called as white? Because uh, it is analogous to your white light. Okay, so we know that in the case of white light, normally uh, white light contains all the frequency components, right? And therefore it is known as white because it is containing all the frequency components. In a similar way, uh, in communication system engineering, when uh, any random process, when it is uh, having its uh, PSD curve, when it is uh, constant over the entire frequency range, then it is uh, normally known as the white process. So if suppose we are having this is uh, our uh, power spectral density function, which is the uh, which is having its unit equals to watts per hertz, then if you wish to calculate what will be the total power available in this XT, okay, in this particular white process, XT, okay. Then uh, we have to calculate this power by, obviously, we have to integrate over all this particular frequency component. So since this frequency component is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity, we have to do this integration uh, and we have to put this X, uh, XF, okay, which is our PSD function, right? So over this particular frequency, we have to do this integration. If you substitute, obviously, you will be getting this power, uh, total power value that will be equals to infinity. And here you can understand that uh, normally uh, we cannot have any real process that can have the infinite power, right? It is theoretically we are saying that normally the white process uh, can have this infinite power. But if you assume that in the practical life, we cannot generate or we cannot have such a uh, random process that can be uh, of uh, infinite duration and therefore it cannot have any infinite power, right? So it is not a meaningful process that you have to remember. So now uh, we have to move on to the more practical version of the white process, uh, which is our uh, 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 white noise process, okay? So this particular white noise we come across in our communication system and our communication system are mostly affected by this white noise, okay? So what is this white noise that we have to understand, okay? So normally in the communication system, because most of the uh, transmitters, uh, receivers, modulators and demodulators, whatever we are making uh, in the communication system, they are actually fabricated out of electronic components. And normally in the electronic component, uh, we find a certain kind of noises 
one of the very popular noise which is available in the electronic component is thermal noise okay and it is found that the uh, because of the uh, fluctuation in the temperature uh, due to the thermal agitation there is a probability that uh, the number of electron which is actually passing through a unit cross sectional area is uh, not constant right and therefore whenever you are applying any certain voltage okay normally we say that the current is constant but uh, normally if you uh, observe this uh, current at the micro level you will find that uh, the current will have a very small fluctuations okay uh, there will be a small fluctuation because of this uh, thermal agitation right because the number of electrons uh, which is actually being generated within the electronic devices and uh, the number of electrons actually moving randomly through the different path uh, different uh, paths available okay and therefore uh, if you see the number of electrons which is passing through a unit cross sectional area or a given cross sectional area it will not be constant over the time and therefore a very small fluctuation in the current uh, will be observed okay and because of that we are actually having a certain noises okay so that is referred as the thermal noise okay so uh, here i will be directly giving you uh, the power spectral density of the thermal noise which is normally given by this particular expression okay so let us say this nt is the uh, uh, white noise process okay uh, so its power spectral density is actually given by this particular expression snf equals to h cross f divided by 2 into e to the power h cross f divided by kt uh, minus one. So where here you can see this uh, this h cross is equals to six point six ten to the power minus thirty four joules per second, which is a reduced Planck constant, and this is our uh, Boltzmann constant in joules per Kelvin. So here you can see this curve if you plot with respect to frequency f. Okay, if we plot this power spectral density uh, function of thermal noise, which is available in the communication systems. If you plot this particular curve with respect to frequency, uh, this kind of curve you are going to get, okay? So you just try to make an observation from the previous curve. If you see here in the white process, we had taken this curve to be a constant and that constant uh, nature is actually maintained up to infinity, uh, up to infinite frequency, right? But normally when you talk about the thermal noise, uh, you will find that after a certain frequency, uh, this uh, uniform nature of the uh, this particular flat spectrum is not uh, no more fl uh, flat after a certain frequency that you can see. Okay, actually it is decreasing after a certain frequency. Okay, so uh, why we are calling this as a white noise that we have to also understand because uh, here we can see directly from this uh, PSD curve, okay, that uh, this uh, flat spectrum is actually not going up to infinity. Okay, after a certain range, uh, this value or this uh, power spectral density curve is actually decreasing and uh, obviously when F tends to infinity, it will become zero. That you can also observe from this particular expression also if you substitute for f equals to infinity after a certain uh, value obviously when f tends to infinity this expression will become zero right so uh, here we have to understand one thing that this rate of convergence towards the zero of this particular expression is very slow with respect to frequency so uh, just for your uh, understanding, you can see that at room temperature, okay, because T is a uh, room temperature, uh, T is a temperature. So K is your uh, um, uh, Boltzmann constant and uh, H cross, I, I have already explained that it is a reduced Planck constant and F is the frequency, okay. So here we can see at room temperature, uh, normally this SNF curve, okay, it will be drops to 90% of its maximum value. Okay, so at what frequency it will drop to 90% uh, at room temperature is around F equals to 2 into 10 to the power 12 hertz. So you can see that this is a very uh, large frequency, okay, 2 into 10 to the power 12 hertz. So up to this frequency, you can say uh, it is having its uh, uh, value uh, around 90% of its maximum value, maximum possible value. 
okay and after that it will start decreasing rapidly right and after that it will be start uh, starting decreasing rapidly so even up to uh, f equals to 2 into the uh, 2 into 10 to the power 12 hertz we can see that this uh, curve is almost flat okay it is almost flat it will not have very significant decrease in its amplitude of your power spectral density function so here one point that i have to uh, make is uh, if you see uh, our communication okay if you see our communication uh, as we know that in the communication we are having different uh, applications we are having different modulation scheme analog modulation schemes digital modulation schemes then we are having satellite communication we are have, having cellular communication we are having radar communication so if you see uh, what are the different ranges in which this different applications of communication is actually having you can see here is that uh, we are having uh, up to the 300 gigahertz here you can see this uh, different frequency ranges okay it is started with uh, 30 kilohertz range okay 3 to uh, 30 kilohertz and then it is uh, going up to extremely high frequency range which is uh, around 300 gigahertz okay so even you can see that in our uh, day to day life that we are using in the communication uh, we rarely do any communication over 300 gigahertz okay and here you can see that this particular frequency component is beyond 300 gigahertz okay 10 to the power 12 so what i can say that our communication lies in this range only okay up to only this range okay and beyond that, uh, we actually not perform any communication. And therefore, even if after 10 to the power 12, if there is a decrease in the PSD, uh, basically up to our communication range, uh, this spectrum is considered to be flat. Okay, And therefore, uh, we are actually calling this as a white noise process that you have to remember. So one thing that you have to always understand that if anybody asks you, does this white noise process contains all the frequency components uh, in their power spectral density? Is it flat for uh, all the frequency component right from zero to infinity? The answer is no, it is not. But uh, in uh, comparison to our communication range, if we consider because we are actually communicating up to 300 gigahertz or 400 gigahertz and so, uh, up to that, this particular spectrum is flat. And beyond that, there is a decrease in the uh, power spectral density curve can be observed, right? So this is one point that you have to remember. So here we can see that as we know, uh, the autocorrelation function and the power spectral densities are normally the Fourier transform pair, okay? So we can calculate the uh, autocorrelation function by directly calculating the inverse Fourier transform of this particular uh, power spectral density function. So if you uh, consider that because it is a, constant value okay because it is a constant value and let us say that constant value is denoted by something n not by 2 how this n not by 2 has come i will explain uh, here you okay so just wait for uh, two or three minutes so let us say if it is a constant value okay n not by 2 then if you calculate any uh, inverse fourier transform of a constant value you are going to get a delta function so here we have got a delta function n not by 2 uh, multiplied with the delta tau so what does it mean by this uh, autocorrelation function? So the meaning is that we are going to get a particular delta function at tau equals to zero, right? So it means that this uh, random process, this random noise process is a highly uh, random, okay? It is highly random in nature. And therefore, if you uh, perform uh, the sampling of such noise process, uh, at any different instant of time, if you, let us say, if you are sampling the noise process at this point, uh, and then again, if you are sampling at this point, then there is no correlation between the values that you are getting. Okay. So that it means, okay, whatever this autocorrelation function here reflects and not upon two delta tau because uh, this uh, uh, autocorrelation function is zero for all tau, not equals to zero. It means that uh, this white noise process uh, will be highly uncorrelated. Okay. It is uncorrelated. Right, so that we have to remember, it is a highly uncorrelated. Right, so there is no correlation between the uh, samples. If you take the sample at any instant of time, there will be no correlation. 
Now you try to see, just come back again to this particular expression. So if you consider at the room temperature and if you substitute all these values, you will find this particular ratio as cross F divided by KT. This value will be smaller than unity, okay? So whenever this value is smaller than unity, if you uh, do the expansion of this exponential Fourier series, uh, exponential series uh, that time you will find that we will be getting a term like if you write e to the power x, this value will be something 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial x cube plus x cube divided by 3 factorial and so on. So if you follow that procedure, if you expand this uh, exponential series and considering that this uh, ratio will be very smaller than a unity, then you can uh, neglect the higher power terms, right? Because x square, x cube, and x cube, uh, x to the power 4, all these terms will become very small because this uh, particular ratio will be way smaller than unity. So if you do this uh, expansion, uh, this expression can be further rewritten as h cross f divided by, uh, I'm just writing the first two term of this exponential series, okay? So 1 plus h cross f divided by kt minus 1. So this and this uh, minus 1 plus 1 will be cancelled out. And uh, uh, obviously we are going to get this value snf equals to kt by 2. Okay. So here you can see this uh, 1, 1 will be cancelled out. And this uh, h cross f and h cross f will be cancelled out. So we are going to get this h uh, kt by 2. Okay. So this term will be coming out as snf equals to kt by 2. So here I have defined this product k into t. You have to remember this k is your Boltzmann constant and t is your uh, temperature, right? So at different room temperature, this n naught value will be different. So I have just defined this n naught equals to k into t. Okay, so this SNF is normally in menu of the books will be represented by n naught by two. Okay, so in the menu of the book, you will find that this power spectral density conventionally represented by n naught by two, whenever there is a two-sided spectrum. You see that uh, this power spectral uh, density, if you see this density curve is actually uh, have both positive and negative frequencies, okay? It is defined for both positive and negative frequencies. So this type of power spectral density, when we are having both positive and negative frequencies, uh, we are saying uh, it has a double-sided power spectral density function. Because we know that there is no negative frequencies, we are just having the positive frequencies. If we wish to represent only a single-sided power spectral density function, then obviously this portion has to also be represented into this particular side. So just we have to uh, multiply this uh, particular value by a factor of two, and all this uh, power will be only uh, represented in positive direction, okay? So that way we have to show in the single-sided uh, PST curve. But here we have just shown this a uh, double-sided power spectral density curve. So normally in the books you will find either n naught by 2 or you can also find that it may be written as eta by 2, okay? So this two uh, uh, definitions or uh, this two conventional way of showing you will find in the uh, many of the books, right? So uh, we'll stop this discussion of white noise process at this point today. Uh, but you remember that uh, in the next video, I will be uh, explaining you what will be the uh, effect if we pa pass this white noise process through a different kind of filters, okay? As we know that we are having different kind of filters like band pass filter, low pass filter, and high pass filters. Uh, I will be explaining you uh, what will be the power content available if such white noise processes will be passed through such filters. So thank you for watching this video. If you have any doubt, let me know with your comments. Thank you.